Welcome to Caregiver Cast with Mary Elaine Petrucci. Are you overwhelmed raising a family, working full time, caring for a parent or grandparent? It can be challenging when you're doing it alone. Caregiver Cast helps busy, burned out professionals reduce their stress and overwhelm to create a better caregiving experience for themselves and their loved ones. Caregiver Cast brings caregivers together with experts who provide information in a variety of areas. In each episode, you'll get tips on topics such as finance, legal, medical, self care, community resources, mindset, and more. We're here to make your caregiving journey a more rewarding one. Acquire the confidence and skills to be a more capable caregiver by implementing the resources and strategies from these expert thought leaders. Get a community of support, resources, and strategies for your caregiving journey inside the Caregiver Lifeline community. Visit caregiverlifelinecommunity.com. And now here's your host, Mary Elaine Petrucci. Hi, welcome to Caregiver Cast. I'm Mary Elaine Petrucci, your host. And my special guest today is Jill Lublin, who will be talking about the profit of kindness. Before I formally introduce Jill, I would like to give you some background information about her. Jill Lublin is an international speaker on the topics of radical influence, publicity, networking, kindness, and referrals. She is the author of four best-selling books, including Get Noticed, Get Referrals, co-author of Guerrilla Publicity and Networking Magic. Her latest book, Profit of Kindness, went number one in four categories. Jill is a master strategist on how to position your business for more profitability and more visibility in the marketplace. She is CEO of a strategic consulting firm and has over 25 years experience working with over 100,000 people, plus national and international media. Jill teaches a virtual publicity crash course and consults and speaks all over the world. She has spoken on many stages with luminaries such as Tony Robbins. She also helps authors create book deals with major publishers and agents, as well as obtain foreign right deals. Welcome, Jill, to Caregiver Cast. Thank you so much, Mary Lane. It's wonderful to be here. So you are going to be talking about the profit of kindness. What made you get into kindness to begin with, Jill? Well, you know, I I hope that I've always been kind. And, you know, it's interesting. I was uh, in with what's talking about caregiving, right? I I am considered, well, at least a partial caregiver for one of my dear friends who I've been Mm -hmm. friends with for more than, gosh, 30 years now. And one day I was doing, um, taking her out and she said, Jill, you are so kind. Wouldn't it be interesting, she said, if we had a new currency, the currency of kindness. And in that moment, Mary Lane, I went, what a great idea. (laughs) Meaning I love the concept. I love how it was spoken. and, And I went to my publisher and I said, what do you think of this book? And they turned it into the prophet of kindness and the book was born literally fast too. Very fast. Really? Uh, Okay. Um, So what does kindness then mean? Can you give us a definition? Well, you know, I, first of all, I think, you know, it's interesting about what does kindness mean? At at one level, I think we all know and feel kindness, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It is as simple as a smile. It is uh, easy to do. It is free to give away. Mm -hmm. Um, And certainly our world needs it now more than ever. And I'm trying to remember, and forgive me, because I'd have to go to my book, because there is like a Latin meeting, which I've forgotten in this very, very moment. But I know it does have that big definition. And mostly, I think it's a feeling really uh, Mm. that is, but it's also a state of being and something that can, an action that can be done. I love it. Um, So how does one go about being kind or going through that profit of kindness? um, Well, you know, in the profit of kindness, I I actually created what I called ROCKS, R-O-K, return on kindness principles. And what that looks like is, um, well, the opportunity of 
giving of kindness, but really like through multiple uh, ways that I've defined it. So what does that mean? Well, a return on kindness principle is patience. Mm. I'm sure we all know that in these times, patience is key, right? Yes. And yeah, so that's one of my return on kindness. And I have to tell you, Mary Lane, the funniest thing when I was working on the chapter about kindness mm -hmm. and patience, wouldn't you know, I had to call the phone company and I got put on hold for an hour. And I remember coming back and saying to the, um, and, and the person who answered the phone after an hour mm -hmm. said to me, thank you for your patience. Now, I'm sure we can all relate. You've been on a plane and they're really late or you've been on hold for a very mm -hmm. long time. Yes. And someone comes to thank you for your patience. And there is part of my brain that goes, well, who said I was patient? you know exactly but i also know that the woman who was thanking me for my patience wasn't responsible for that long hold wait time and to shall we say be impatient with her certainly not only would not be an act of kindness but really truthfully it, it's not her fault so just something interesting i think yes definitely i know i've been in situations where i've got i need to wait online um on hold for an extended period of time. And it does get, does wear on your patience, I have to say. Um, however, if you look at it, like you're saying, you're the person on the other side is not responsible for making you stay on hold for any length of time. It's just because of the volume of people that are calling in. Exactly. Um, so what else besides the return on kindness, what else can we look at? in terms of kindness? Well, the other thing that I love around kindness and one of my other principles is flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know, I'm sure we all have felt uh, the need for more flexibility, especially in today's world, in today's time. Mm -hmm. Flexibility is really key uh, for patients and I think also for business success. And the thing that um, has really come clear to me in kindness and writing the book, um, as well as interviewing many companies for The Profit of Kindness, is um, that kind companies get more publicity. And, yes. you know, I'm a publicity expert. We've had the <laughs> pleasure of working together. Yes. And, you know, kind companies get more publicity. This is really something we have found really consistently, which I, I just think is really interesting, right? Mm -hmm. To understand and know that that Kindness is is something that does, funny enough, lead to profit. However, you never do kindness because of profit or looking for profit. But what happens is that it it leads to profit. I've seen this very consistently. So we have patience and flexibility. Um, is there something else that we need to look at in terms of kindness? Yeah, there's actually seven of them. Seven oh. of them return on kindness principles. Okay. Another one, I, I won't tell you all now. You have to you have to read oh, the book. Okay. <laughs> but I will tell you at least one more, which is compassion. Mm. You know, I remember a publicity okay. client of mine who said, uh, called me up and, and had to discontinue for the moment their actual work together because they'd gotten diagnosed with cancer. Mm. Now, listen, I have a contract, it's enforced, meaning, you know, people have to show up for their appointments. And as, as I believe, you know, 80% of the time, the rules work and 20% of the time, let's have some flexibility, some compassion mm -hmm. and kindness. And certainly in a situation like that, I wasn't going to, shall we say, push it and hold her to a contract in every session. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. compassion. It's flexibility. Um, you know, all of that plays in. And I think when you run a business, you're dealing with people and people require kindness. Oh, most definitely. If you're not kind to them, that there's you're losing not only that person, but seven people behind them that find out that you're not being very patient, flexible or compassionate. Yes, that seems like a terrible way to run business. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I just want to mention one other yeah. one because, you know, it's um, it's important in today's world. And that is positivity. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you yes. be more positive? Positive people attract business, attract kindness. Um, you know, I, I do think there's just something that people can sniff <laughs> about. Are you truly not only positive, but are you truly kind? And so I, I think that's important. The other thing, Marilyn, I just want to say that I think, you know, is key is people talk about a random act of kindness. And I just want to put in the mix. Okay. Please, please practice a conscious act of kindness. A Ooh. conscious act of kindness. I like that because you're making the conscious decision to do it instead of just doing it on a whim. So right. And, you know, imagine a world, right? Imagine right. a world that where people are practicing these conscious acts of kindness. People are practicing um, continuous patience and flexibility. And some of the things that I outline as return on kindness principles. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a world that's working and that's, considerate and that cares of one another um you know kind of how communities and villages used to be exactly um so let me ask you this jill how do we get back to doing conscious acts of kindness well number given one given our climate yeah yeah and 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 absolutely this is why i feel so strong now about this is um, given our specific climate, you're absolutely right. This is like the very thing we need. So what do we do? Well, number one, practice, right? Practice okay. is what makes perfect. And you maybe not, won't be perfect right away, but you'll have progress, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is in practicing conscious acts of kindness, imagine this, you do one thing every day and the multiplication effect of that. So if I get to the end of the day and I haven't done something, you bet I'm going to write a nice text or an email or send a handwritten card, all by the way, very nice and kind things, mm -hmm. right? Um, today mm -hmm. I uh, woke up, my husband is not feeling well and my neighbor, I was supposed to take her to, Bocelli. I mean, my gosh, we're missing Bocelli tonight because uh -huh. yes, yes. True. No. Yes. I know. I know. Don't even ask. I'm so upset. And uh, mm. I can't get the tickets if you lived here. Um, well, but let me just say, I know, I know. And the truth is I can't leave my husband here. To me, that would be unkind, right? Mm. The way he feels, I, I would feel concerned leaving him alone. Um, exactly. although gosh knows this is a legend that I'm missing, you know, this mm -hmm. is also about kindness and about love. And my neighbor, by the way, said to me, cause I've been busy all day and I, I don't have food in the house. I mean, you know, a little bit of food, but not to feed someone and myself for the next several days. Guess what she did? She went to Safeway for me. This is the same neighbor I was going to take tonight to see about Shelly. Uh -huh. And, you know, um, and all this stuff unraveled for our beautiful plans tonight for dinner and, and the concert and all these good things, right? Mm -hmm. And this is life. But the truth is, she as a neighbor was incredibly kind yes. and saved me yeah. trying to figure out how to, you know, get food. Although we have good news is delivery services these days. And I'm so grateful for that. It makes things a lot easier. But mm -hmm. that's the thing I'm talking about, the neighborly kindness. And, you know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. She and I have been doing this for each other. And it started when she fell in her driveway and, you know, frankly, couldn't walk. And I would bring her meal after meal several times a week, by the way. I would cook mm -hmm. for her and make her things. And, and you know what's interesting? Ever since I did that, which was maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. we've just been doing things like this for each other ever since. Which reminds me what neighborhood kindness is, what, you know, love your neighbor. I mean, this is, it's so beautiful. And I went, yeah, this, this is community. This is caring. Most definitely. Um, how do we take it out of your neighborhood, Jill, and replicate it, um, given the fact that everybody is on edge about um what's going on with all the mass shootings lately again. Um, 
what can we do as like caregivers, even in our small way, um, to offer acts of kindness? Well, I think, you know, this neighborhood kindness, and by the way, this is neighbor, I just want to say, I didn't hadn't even met, well, I mean, I knew her husband, I knew her, but we didn't really connect and talk until, mm -hmm. frankly, I think, funny enough, the pandemic. And we've lived next door to each other. So let's mm -hmm. start in your neighborhood. Let's start with who's on either side of you and across from you. I mean, think about that. That's like three right there, a triangle, beautiful triangle. Mm -hmm. Then that triangle, you know, grows into other shapes because each person is affected by the kindness of the other. And I think it just naturally gives you ways to help each other ongoingly. And, you know, I, um, as I think about that, I also know that, you know, as a caregiver, you're already kind, right? It's just, mm -hmm. I know that. You're already kind. You're the kind of person who cares for others. So look even more with the people you care for. And then, you know, frankly, my friends, especially caregivers, I'm going to ask you, are you being kind to yourself? Mm. That's a big one, isn't it? Yes, it is, because caregivers don't look at what they're doing as being kind. They always look at it, well, not always, That's, but they look at it sometimes as being, um, uh, it's spoiling their life. They're, they're being resentful about all the demands that are being made mm -hmm. upon them. Um, and I would agree. I think if you're just kind and understand and accept the person that you're caring for, um, that would go a long way as well, because then it seems to me that that would spread out to like neighbors on either side or across the street, like you were mentioning. So yeah, it makes um, a big difference. You know, one plus one equals many, right? And, yes. and you just start where you start. And sometimes, honestly, it really has to begin right here for you mm -hmm. to be kinder to you. And especially as a caregiver, um, you know, I know I've been there with my own parents uh, and, and it does take real kindness to oneself. You know, sometimes it's this day, right? My husband, I told you sick today. Guess what? I'm a little tired today. Taking time, like, where can I take that for me? I had to cancel some appointments today. Mm -hmm. So that I could be kind to me and take it a little easier. I, I think we've been so trained to just mm -hmm. go, 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 especially in our Western society, mm -hmm. that sometimes we really do need to stop and just get solid here. Oh, I totally agree. I think um, uh, that kindness has to come from us first before we can share it with someone else. So you... Um, how does one get into that space where they can feel do kind things to, for themselves first? Um, are there specific things that caregivers can do? Well, I think um, number one, being willing to take a look at the conversation and ask yourself, am I kind to me? Right? What, mm -hmm. what am I doing okay. uh, in acts of kindness, not only for me, but for others? Where is my conscious act of kindness? I think those three questions, right? Like we don't want to overwhelm you and knock you on the head to be kinder. I want you to gently connect to your kindness principles to ask yourself on the return on kindness principles, am I practicing that? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, where where can I be kinder to me? I think that those questions will take care of the answers. Okay. And that will help us with the compassion, the flexibility. Yes. Okay. Those are great questions to ask. So um, can you give us three takeaways about the profit of kindness, Jill? Yes. Um, so first is, are you... Um, are you putting something in action? Like what, what is it that you're doing and willing to do mm. to be a kinder, more loving person, right? And by the right. way, kindness and loving sometimes goes together, sometimes doesn't. Right. What's that one act of kindness you can do every single day? Like check, like literally put it on your checklist. 
and make sure that it's getting done. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I would study, if, if you could please, the seven principles, return on kindness principles, and make sure that there's um, active in your life. And the one, let's pick one that maybe you need to practice a little more and practice that. In my case, it's patience. That's mine too, Jill. So I think we're on the same wavelength. Um, I hear that you have a free offer for our caregivers. Absolutely. Well, you, I want you in the kindness circle as my guest. Well, thank you so much. I really am looking forward to that. Oh, you are so welcome. And with that, um, it's jilllublin.com slash kindness circles, which will bring you to that link. And I'm sure Mary Lane will put that in the show notes too for you. But that's what I want to give each of you is the opportunity to be kinder and have a practice in it so that we can practice together and be one with that. Um, I think that's a wonderful idea and it's a great offer to get caregivers into your inner circle so that they can start practicing kindness on a regular basis. Um, I think um, kindness is so needed right now and um, unless we start with ourselves, it's going to be very challenging to do it for our loved one or even our neighbors that live around us. So yes, um, exactly. Um, I really want to thank you, Jill, for coming on today and talking to us about the profit of kindness. It's a very apt topic given the social climate we're in right now. And um, thank you so much for being here and sharing your um, wisdom with all of us. Thank you. It's a delight, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Caregiver Cast today. Get a community of support, resources, and strategies for your caregiving journey inside the Caregiver Lifeline community. Visit caregiverlifelinecommunity.com. Get involved with the show. Send your email to mpetrusi2002 at gmail.com. And we'll see you again next week for another episode of Caregiver Cast.